Hello. Thank you for joining. It's another sh episode of the Momo Show, number nine. Can you hear me? How's my audio? Let me know. Hopefully you can hear the tunes. Audio sounds good. Can you hear the music? I can hear the music. Oh yeah. Cool. Ah, well. I can hear right. me. And you, can you hear you? Great. Wow. I like getting the hang of this crap. Awesome. Welcome. Thank you for joining on this fine, beautiful day with the audio working straight off the bat. It's like I actually know what I'm doing. This is the Momo Show, and I'm joined today graciously by Gonzo and Sector. Say hello, guys. Good morning. Let's make more of my mods. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. All right, Smalio. Thank you. And I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> all right. So, uh, jumping right in, um, you know, the sound check's out of the way. We pretty well confirmed that uh, y'all can hear me, and uh, this is episode nine of the Momo Show. And uh, I missed you last week, and I apologize about that, but some really important major stuff went down. Uh, namely, we launched our 6.10.0 update. We're actually on 6.12 already. We'll get to that in a moment. But uh, as I mentioned in the prior stream, um, it's the UMO update featuring the automatic installation guide, and we'll get into uh, details about that in a moment. Um, today, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, our plans for a so-called rolling release pattern, um, where we'll more rapidly kick out website updates, so you're not having to use the beta site all the time and deal with you know inconsistencies that way. Um, I would like to work a little bit on some WIP lists, work in progress lists, where um, <clears throat> excuse me, we will be planning a the next major update to the website and all of our content. And then, uh, at Welpa, hey, hey, welcome. I'm so glad you're here, my brother. Uh, and uh, uh, another topic I'd like to get to today is something Gonzo's been working on, which is the quality options. And by that, I mean, we want to allow users to be able to say, I have a very high-end machine, give me the ultra GPU melting options. Or maybe I got a little potato, give me the LQ options, give me the Steam Deck options, you know, we'll get into that. And then if there's time, uh, I got a, a very nice feature request, bug report from a user for the configurator. So maybe we can take a, a dive into that. Um, but without further ado, let's just jump right in to, you know, the really big news, which is the UMO update featuring the automatic installation guide. And uh, our friend Gonzo is working on a video for Windows and our community friend Sulphur, Cache OS user, is working on a tutorial video for Linux users. Um, so by no means I don't want to steal any of their thunder, but I do want to just give a quick walkthrough um, for my friends here on the stream. So let's just do that, shall we? Um, the same website you know and love, although there are decidedly fewer buttons nowadays than there were, you know, quite a few years ago. But uh, you come to the main homepage of the website, <coughs> excuse me, and you're greeted with uh, two options now. Um, we still have the good old manual install, you know, if you uh, are somebody who wants to take your time and, you know, do it that way by hand. Uh, yeah, it is clean. It's a thing of beauty. And mad, mad props to Sarah Sunday for this footer. It's just a thing of beauty. Every time I look at it, I weep. Yeah, actually, I I'm glad Al Tawalpa mentioned it because I was just thinking this as well. Like, it's it's really cool looking at the site and seeing it like this as opposed to remembering, like, the, the button madness it was. Even just a couple of years ago when we when we had rwc and we were implementing that into the site and it's, it's very nice yeah for sure someday on the stream i would like to do like a classic retrospective of how the website looked over the years we can like install old versions of the website but uh that archaeological dig will be for another time perhaps <laughs> but uh yeah move, moving into it though um so the manual install is still there i'm not going to click on that button though because let's face it the automatic install in addition to being faster the beautiful thing about it is there is less room for mistakes you know it doesn't matter how experienced you are when there's you know 500 to a thousand steps to do something that's 500 to a thousand chances to make a mistake and 500 steps is a lot a thousand steps is a lot 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 you know even the the most sharp not mistake making person can, can have a mistake in there so without further ado we're here at the automatic installation guide when you first click the page there's not much here you are prompted to choose a mod list and to choose your operating system and we remind you that you got to do that when you get here so uh you know i'm gonna go ahead and just go right to the to the bee's knees here total overhaul I'm gonna select my os which is linux 
um, but we'll take a look at some of the other options. And then you click submit, and you're greeted with this kind of summary of the uh, mod list and OS that you picked. We thank you for selecting a mod list, and we prompt you to read the mod list FAQ. And it's really easy to gloss over this, but uh, the FAQ is it's a thing of beauty. Many members of the team have contributed to it, and the intention of this page is to answer common questions that users come up with. You know, you suddenly have 500 plus mods plopped into your lap. The game has changed every which way. You're gonna see something that you don't really expect. And so we've really tried to address all the common things here on this page. Strongly encourage you, um, take a look before you get going um, with everything in the auto guide. I'm not gonna really read everything here today, but yeah, just check it out. Um, and it's very important to note that you do not skip any steps. If you're doing the auto guide, every step must be completed in full without any errors. If you have an error and you don't know how to solve it, please reach out, file an issue on our GitLab, come into our Discord and chat it up with us and we're happy to help you. Um, if you skip a step or have a problem, your setup is not gonna be correct and the game will not function as intended. So this is very, very important. So moving on, the first thing obviously you have to do uh, is by Morrowind. We don't explicitly say it, but you do need to install it as well. Maybe we'll change that verbiage <laughs> just to say it explicitly. And install OpenMW. And each operating system that you choose has a sp OS specific set of instructions on how to install OpenMW. We have Windows, Mac, and Linux specific instructions. Um, so, you know, we tried really hard to make sure everybody's covered no matter what your system is. Um, and it's also very worth noting, very important here, most mods and by proxy are mod lists, only compatible, unfortunately, with the English English language of Morrowind. Um, so, you know, if you're looking to play with the Deutsch or the French version, um, we're not really there yet. Maybe pre-2090 someday we'll have some magical toddly way to, to make that work, but unfortunately you gotta, you gotta use the English version, so. Um, Linux has a couple options for installing uh, OpenMW because it's a little weird, but uh, get that get that going. Once you have OpenMW installed, you're ready to move on. We have published something called the Momo Tools Pack. Ooh, excuse me. And the Momo Tool Pack is, as the description says, all the tools you need to automatically install and configure our mod list in one package. You just click the download button for your operating system and you get, uh, let me just open this up here. Mods, tools, and you have a nice package here on Linux, of course, with just everything Delta plugin, ground coverify, configurator, UMO, light fixes, TS3 command, everything's in there, and uh, including documentation, readmes, licenses, change logs. Um, it's all you need, just one download for everything. And when you have the tools pack, you're basically ready to begin installing mods. And UMO makes it really easy. Um, we have Again, Linux specific instructions, Windows specific instructions, and Mac specific instructions. Which ones you see here changes based on what you pick above. So let's go ahead and uh, just for funsies, let's go, let's move to my favorite uh, Redmond Washington OS. And now we have, you can see here, we've got a special, uh, you know, specially defined steps for Windows. This is exactly what you would type in. Uh, open the folder you extracted the tools pack to, shift right click, it's gonna open, and that'll open a context menu, open a PowerShell window, not admin, pretty please. And uh, you just plop these commands in. And uh, the nice, the really nice thing is, this command when you install will automatically detect if you have Nexus Premium or not. If you do, it's gonna just, you know, rapid fire download everything. I think I did expanded vanilla in like 15 minutes from nothing last weekend when I was testing some features out. It's really a thing of beauty. You can, um, uh, let's see here. You can tell Umo to download things a little bit faster here. Let's go Umo help Umo install. Let's zoom this in a little bit here. Umo install help. And there is the uh, threads option here. And so you might set this to the number of CPU cores that you have. I put it to 20. And when I do that, the download just, it's like, mind-blowingly fast so we don't um we don't put the threads option here by default because everybody's computer is going to be different you're going to have 
differently capable network connections and, and hardware in your computer. So um, this is really just a pro tip. Uh, but yeah, you, you run this and then kind of go make a sandwich or have a cup of tea and uh, let it do its thing. Um, and then when that's finished, you'll be uh, you'll see that uh, Umo kind of just exits and uh, you'll be ready to run the configurator. And the configurator is a piece of software that is designed to talk to our website. And it basically, uh, you if you've used our website before, you might be familiar with the config generator, the CFG generator, which uh, when you come here, it would give you you know, a loadout of, of stuff that you could paste into your OpenMW CFG to get a correctly sorted, formatted load order. Um, the configurator does all that for you, right? And so the, co the command snippet we give you will config total overhaul. So it will give you settings and uh, load order information. We also tell you to run the nav mesh tool, which will generate a nav mesh DB. That'll remove some stuttering while you're playing. Uh, we'll run the validator, which is another tool that comes in the tools pack, just to make sure in case, uh, you know, you had some problems downloading mods or something, it makes sure everything is there that's supposed to be there and you got no errors. And then we say uh, dash dash verbose, just to give you all the output. You know, running the nav, nav mesh tool takes a bit of time, even on a really capable machine, it takes more than a couple of minutes. So it's nice to get some feedback um, about what it's doing. And the verbose option will spit out all that feedback. Eventually, I'll make a progress bar for it, but uh, that's a pr hopefully pre-2090 goal. And if you want to use a dev build, OpenMW dev build, this is where you make that choice. Um, it is possible to tell Umo to exclude dev build mods. Uh, by default, though, it will just download all the mods, including dev build mods, on our list. makes it easy for you to, to try things out. But if you want to configure your load order for a dev build uh, setup, you just use the dash dash dev option. Um, and so when you run the configurator, uh, it will prompt you, hopefully for just one thing, um, the INI importer executable, and that's gonna be in the folder where you installed OpenMW. From there, it should be able to find everything else it needs, which is you know a handful of other things. Um, if it does prompt you for more than that, I'd like to hear about it, because that's I consider that a bug. Um, if you're using the tools pack, and, and you installed OpenMW the you know normal way, it should only ask you for one thing. Nice and easy. Um, and so when the configurator's done, you're basically ready to go. All the hard stuff is done. Your mods are downloaded, extracted, properly modified as needed to clean or remove a file here or there, and your load order is correctly set up. Your settings are correctly set so that you have the expected look and feel, and you're basically good to go. Um, we have next up though, the gameplay settings and others section where we don't exactly set every single option because while some of them are required, right? Going back to the CFG generator page here, um, we can get a nice taste of that. These options are things that are strictly required to get the intended gameplay, the intended look and feel of the setup, but there are a lot of other options. Um, you know, we can open open mw launcher and just take a look there's so much more here um display settings all kinds of options i mean i can't even begin to go over everything here um so there's things that you might want to choose that are that are more on the subjective side so that's what this section is for to kind of guide you through that um we link you to our uh settings tweak section the official documentation um and then beyond that it's time to basically run the game and see how it runs. You're, you could technically just start playing now, but it's a really good idea at this point. Run the game, make sure your frame rate's good. We mention a few settings that you might want to check out. In particular, view distance is something that we don't set for you because that's, again, you know, what works for that is really going to depend on uh, well, what your computer is, you know. Um, if you're on a Steam Deck, it's difficult to push the view distance out so hard without really requiring some other tweaks. So, you know, this is something that you got to go into game, into the game and try out different values. So we sort of walk you through that. Um, we link you to our performance guide and how to test performance. Um, it's actually really trivial to get in game, skip the character generation and just run around real quick and see like how, how is everything, you know? Um, in fact, let's just do that now. We'll fire up uh, my expanded vanilla here. Come on. There we go. 
and the intent is to just put you in the game again this guide will tell you exactly what you need to do uh to get going with this santa hey man thanks for joining i'm so glad you're here man um welcome welcome the intention is to get you in the game just for a testing context we're not ready to play just yet you want to make sure the performance is good um you can be reasonably assured when the configurator finishes and the validator says you're good to go you can be reasonably assured that your load order is basically perfect so you're not really looking for those kinds of errors um you know you're more at this point you're you're trying to think about okay how can we get performance to be optimal um you know i am playing on an intel igpu here so don't let this be indicative of the performance you might see mm, here we go <laughs> I knew I was probably pushing it a little bit to uh, to load expanded vanilla. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, we are in single digits. Let's see if I can get some by disabling the water shader. So this is an example of a tweak you might make, right? We do actually turn the water shader on, but you could turn it off. And yeah, look at that. We doubled our frame rate. We're in double digits now almost. Um, wow, who's this guy? <laughs> uh, yeah, slideshow mode. I don't normally fire up a proper mod list on the stream just because, yeah, when I'm streaming and you know outputting to three displays and running a, a rather you know a great expanded vanilla doesn't put a bunch of um, texture replacers in but it is rather resource demanding still nonetheless let's try to uh move the detail in a little bit here and so that's a, an example of how you might change the view distance um but yeah so at this point you're in game you're running around and, and it really it's up to you to to determine like what is acceptable for you i personally don't have like the even on my at proper gaming rig i don't have the most uh you know highest end cpu or graphics card so i personally i cap my frame rate at 30 um and i make a couple of other concessions so that i can get a a good performance you know rate um it might it might seem a little to cap at 30 fps but for me personally i feel like having a stable frame rate is better than having like the absolute highest possible frame rate if your rig allows for capping at 60 or whatever the refresh rate of your display happens to be 14 uh you know 144 or whatever by all means do it up um but yeah so at that point you've gotten in game you've uh decided that it works well for you um yeah, absolutely. Shaders too, out to well, but thank you for mentioning that. By all means, we do set you up, as you can see here on the CFG generator, we do set you up with a very particular shader loadout. But, like, if your frame rate is really suffering, you know, um, you can experiment with, you know, turning shaders on or off. The very nice thing about this is if you change anything that we deem strictly required, you can simply go back up and rerun the configurator and everything will be brought back to the known good setup so you know if you turn off all of our shaders and you don't exactly remember how it was you can just rerun the configurator and the nice thing is the configurator just won't just mow over your settings it will actually make a backup of anything you've created uh previously so you couldn't find those files uh, for example the open mwcfg file there will be a dot backup file in the same folder where the normal one lives. So we're not just uh, trampling over what you set, but you can always come back to the known good setup by just simply rerunning this command. Um, and I do want to, we did include this section here, and I want to just quickly go over that. We do issue a warning about updating mods. Um, it's actually extremely easy to update mods and your load order with Umo and the configurator. You know, just rerun the commands, basically. Um, but it's not really advised to update mods if you have an in-progress save game for various reasons uh, relating to the implementation of the engine and mods in general sometimes it's safe but there is no hard and fast rule so you really need to be extra sure um personally when i play i don't look at nexus mods i try to ignore mod updates don't check our update center um and really you only want to update a mod if there is like a bug fix available that you know excuse me, that you know is going to, you know, fix a, cr a critical issue and if the mod author can reasonably assure you that it's going to be okay. So um, definitely give this section a quick read. We do tell you how right here how to update just one mod without actually updating all of Umo's DB and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, 
Uh, and, uh, you know, hey, that's it. <laughs> when you've gotten to this point, when you've got your load order configured, your mods installed, you've got a cozy place for performance, you're ready to play the game. And, um, you know, it's a far cry from the old process of basically spending, you know, depending on how much time you can dedicate to it, a week or, or more to get going. So um, I'm extremely proud of the work that the team has put into this. Thank you to everybody. Uh, special thanks to Fall Children for coming on the scene with uh, Umo and, like, really, you know, inspiring all this um, to, to happen because it really felt like... It really felt like a 2090 pipe dream, you know, to have a really nice, slick way of doing all this. And, uh, I mean, here we are. So, it's, what can I say? <laughs> we have finally I, arrived at 2090. I do want to um, elaborate just a little bit on the, um, the, the parts that you mentioned about, like, updating mods in your save and, and things like that. Um, there are actually kind of, at least for ESP-based mods... There's relatively simple ways that we could um, determine, even programmatically, if a given mod is safe to update or not. But it's, I mean, the, the problem with uh, that and why we haven't done it yet at this point is primarily that that's a lot of work. It requires that somebody with an in-depth knowledge of the save format go and like itemize every single thing that would go into a save and figure out which are going to change and which aren't if that makes sense so it's something that i've wanted to do for a while we messed around with improving the the compatibility of the save format and maybe adding some functionality to test 3 command that will make it modify or be aware of omw saves um but yeah it's just it's a lot of work and uh, we've we've been more focused on on the fancier parts of this workflow that people actually care about because when it comes to updating mods it's a lot easier to just say, hey, like, don't do not do it in the middle of the playthrough. And that there's your hard and fast rule while we figure out the hard technical aspects. Thank you, Sector. That is a great point. Um, it, it, yes. And that's actually something I've really, like, is on my hopefully pre-2090 list. <laughs> get, get a little cozy with the Rust programming language. Check out Greatness 7's, you know, TS3 support. And, uh, you know, we need a save editor and, and some kind of a tool to let us introspect into that and uh yeah that's something we could totally do but it's a non-trivial problem thank you for bringing that up so yeah um you know thank you for my uh, speed run walkthrough of the auto guide and, and for joining me on it and uh i'm again i'm so happy to bring that to the community and to see an influx of users um you know some folks were understandably put off by the m massive amount of work that was required to get going with our our setup and now it's like uh, relatively easy um so yeah and thank you to everybody so far who's used it thank you to everybody who has come into our discord and reported a problem and helped us improve the workflow overall um many of us on the team are not windows users and so there have been a lot of windows issues that have kind of slipped through the cracks and uh we've been very happy to get that smoothed over and so we're still getting there but yeah just really phenomenal to be here so uh the next thing i want to talk about is going to be a bit of a discussion um but basically one thing that we've wanted to do for a while is we've wanted to bring updates to the website and mod lists and everything to you the user more quickly um and there's a few things that were required for that if you've watched my streams in the past maybe you have seen um me using the deploy tool for my command line ansible is what it's called um, and we deploy it, we'll make a change and deploy the site real quick, uh, or maybe less quick. Um, and that's all well and good, but like, you know, maybe I, I catch a cold and I'm offline, or, or I have to like, Todd forbid, you know, not think about OpenMW for a couple of days, it is really inconvenient to the team because then I'm not available to update the website. And so one of the things we have done further to that is we have actually implemented an automatic deploy setup whereby when we push changes to the website uh what happens is the gitlab pipelines that we are so graciously gifted by our friends at gitlab.com uh will kick off a deployment of the code and what happens here is basically i mean there isn't much to it the gitlab ci robots will take our code and put it on the server and uh boom just like that it's it's brought to you the user um, and so I've been working on this document here that explains 
what code goes to what website and when and, and what we consider a minor release, a patch release, and so forth. What's our release checklist and all this. And the end game for this is if you're not familiar with the rolling release term, it's typically used, uh, as, as far as I've seen, by projects that don't exactly have a version number. If you're familiar with Arch Linux, for example, it's considered a rolling release Linux distro. They don't have Arch Linux, you know, 9.0 or whatever. It's just Arch Linux and it's updating every day. And that's a rolling release. We're not looking to give you that exactly because we do still want to have version numbers, right? Like you, the user, if you install a mod list today, you still want to know a month from now, oh shoot, like what changes has the team made? You know, you want to be able to come to the change log and have some kind of cohesive uh, view of, of what happened and when. And so that's why we want to keep the version number thing happening. Um, you know, I would also add that we um, we also add, you can see right here, we add the Momo version number to your config when you install it. Um, that's useful information for users, and we don't want to just drop that. So we're not, you know, to be pedantic about the term rolling release, we're not going full rolling release, but what we do want to do is we want to have a workflow that says, hey, um, you know, it gets from beta to live in a short amount of time with as least amount of effort as possible. And so this document here is kind of the beginnings of the planning of that. I have described our current workflow. Hey, Eltario, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for joining. Uh, you're just in time. <laughs> We're talking about rolling release or getting there at least. Um, so this is a kind of our current workflow, right? Uh, and and so just to kind of quickly go over it, um, if you're not familiar with Git or branches or any of that, don't worry. Um, but it's basically where we store our code. And you can think of a branch as like a version. Think of it like the code is like a tree branch, you know. And we have our, our master branch. And then we have our beta branch that comes off and, and we develop on that and we'll eventually bring it back in. Um, and a tag is like, you know, when we tag it, we say this is version 6.12 or whatever. Um, and so we consider a patch release to contain only corrections to existing content, right? We're not uh, really removing a mod. We're not adding anything. It's like, oh, we're updating some instruction or, or like changing a, a value of something. It becomes a minor release, though, when we see content additions or removals. We add a significant new page or workflow to the site. It's not, again, it's not a hard rule, but like this is kind of the the pattern we intend to follow. And so that a minor would be, if we go back here to our change log, a minor would be this middle number, a patch would be this number on the right here, and a major update would be that one right there. And so as we say right here, major release would contain contain large changes to the mod list or even a new mod list. Are you planning a new mod list? Maybe. <laughs> um, so yeah. We are not a project that is frozen in time, and thank Todd, we are not a community that is frozen in time. We are always seeing new content, new mods, updates, fantastic projects like uh, Province Cyrodiil, Tamriel Rebuild are always bringing us amazing new things. And we as a project, we're committed to keeping the mod list up to date, patched, working, you know. And so sometimes that means cutting a, a major release and adding a lot of new content. We get the modathon each year, we get madness each year, relatively speaking. You know, there's always, it seems like, a fresh batch of things that could potentially go in the mix. And so we as a team have been quietly planning for the latest release, major release, which is going to be 7.0. And um, my hope is before we get there, we will have kind of this rapid fire release pattern kind of more ironed out. We've discussed it internally. Um, it might look like where we don't necessarily tag, use git tags anymore. It's kind of a technical thing that doesn't really matter to users. It's not really important to you, the user. Um, arguably not super important to us, the developers of the website, either. Um, so I'm not really sure exactly what that's going to look like, but we have discussed it quite a bit internally. And then, um, yeah, uh, this release checklist is just something I put together to make sure that before we put a bow on a release and, and you know ship it off to you, the user, we just kind of run through everything and make sure it's good. Um, in the past... It would have involved mostly just running the validator, but now that we have the automatic process, um, 
you know, we got to make sure that we vet that and run it the way you would run it. So we get the tools pack, use Umo, configure it, validate it, blah, blah, blah. Don't use customizations. Um, and then just a code snippet of, of, of how I do that. You know, I have a, if you've seen my stream before, I've got a collection of bash scripts to automate boring stuff. And uh, these are snippets out of that, basically. And yeah, we would just do this. And when these all come back good, in particular, the run validator part of the configurator, which is like the final good sanity check, then uh, we're ready to release. So um, I don't know if anybody you know on the team who's here, here with me has a particular input, a uh, piece of input about the rolling release pattern, but my, my thinking is what I say right here is moddingopenmw.com. The main is deployed on a git tag push, and I feel like we will cut this one out. Staging is just another version of the website we use. It's like the beta site, but it doesn't have the big red warning at the top saying, hey, this is a beta. By that, I mean this stuff. We might just cut this out and, I don't know, use it for something. I don't know. <laughs> There's actually a testing.moddingopenmw.com that exists that is shut off at the moment because we don't really use it. But uh, my thinking is we would continue our pattern of deploying beta automatically when we update the beta branch and then... You know, our workflow at present is such that we'll open a merge request into master. And I'm thinking when we merge into master, we'll deploy the main site. And further to that, what I'm thinking is we will get the version number from our change log. So when we deploy now, the version would be read, you know, as, as 6.12.0. In our current pattern, we actually get it from... Well, so I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. To, like interrupt you here but can we interrupt right um when i'm thinking about this i'm imagining that we would just continue to use git tags but then we do a little extra in the ci when it is pushing a git tag which is similar to how our pattern works on our bod repositories right like when i have sector secret stash I go over there and I can fuck around with the website at my leisure. I can change things in the site and dev builds of the mods will update and the site will update. But then when I actually want to do a new release, I'll push a new tag and my CI makes the tag release for that mod. And then it also updates the front end with, with that extra behavior from the tag, right? Yeah, and I hear you. And as I was actually just about to show, um, presently, when we use git tags, we get a little bit of extra information from uh, from the version control system called git. My friends in the UK, don't worry, I'm not cussing you out. <laughs> um, we get the version, the last tagged version. We get this number, which indicates how many changes we have made since the last version. And this bit right here after the G, is actually the uh, a part of the when you make a change in Git, you get what's called a commit hash. It's part of the identifying commit hash. So we actually get a lot of extra information. I personally, I'm a programmer by my day job, you know, so like I, I think this is important. But like if I take a step back, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if it's important to our version indicator, but I. Like, you could argue this is useful information, and the workflow you described, Dave, is, um, you know, it's it works well, and it allows experimentation, right? Um, so I don't know. We really have to we gotta kind of ponder on that. That's good feedback, though. And please interrupt at will. Yeah, like, when, when I'm imagining this, right, um, my, my vision of it, at least from our perspective and the way that we would do is we're just on master and this will probably necessitate we be a little bit more careful about doing pull requests like we do upstream at openmw right um but regardless i we would work on master like 90 percent of the time and then after a while we'll be like all right let's push a tag this this is going to be 6.12 kind of exactly like how upstream does it right where we think we're about to get close to the 0.49 release. We're going to make a tag, and then we're going to branch stuff off. So you're saying, okay, so you're saying something close to what I just described, but where maybe, like, changes to master will deploy the beta site, 
and then a tag deploys the main site. Is that right? Well, I'm thinking the changes to master will always update the main site, and maybe we wouldn't even need the main site? I don't know. And then when we push the tag, that's when we update the change logs. I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, interesting. I, I definitely like updating the main site on push to master. I think regardless of what we do, we got to move in that direction. Um, but uh, yeah, it's interesting to kind of think about if tags fit in the workflow, how do they fit in the workflow? I'm still not really sure, but that's an interesting idea for sure. Um, but yeah, we're most of the way there. Really, we have the technical problems solved. We got the GitLab CI robots that update the website without me doing anything, which felt weird at first, but it's cool. It's certainly cool to see it happen. Um, and we just got to decide on the process. My main argument in favor of tags, and what this probably should be elaborated on in the back later, but my, my main argument in favor of tags, right, is that that would allow us to more easily, we can immediately go back and see, like, what was the site at 6.10? Whereas, if we abandon git tags, that's not really a big deal, like, 80% of the time, but if we ever do end up in a position where I want to go back to 6.13 in, like, two seconds, because I've got to test the regression in the list or something like that, then that's where we might start to feel some pain from, from not using git tags anymore. Good call out. You're absolutely right. Um, from a from a website developer standpoint, it is nice to have those markers in the version control. That and that's where I keep coming back to. So yeah, that's a great call out for sure. Um, well, I think uh, we can come back to this for sure. But uh, I think it's worth moving on to kind of the next thing that I wanted to touch on. Um, this is something I've wanted to do for the past couple of streams. Um, we just didn't really get there. Um, but basically, I want to have a way where we can make significant changes to the mod lists while continuing to, to do releases. We'll put out 6.12, 6.13. Kind of a, uh, a copy of the mod lists that is not, uh, you know, like if I go here and I click on mod lists, you know, we might be working on total overhaul 7.0, but I don't want that to show up here. I want it to be viewable for people who want to view it, but I don't want it to be a part of the like officially endorsed list. I want people to be able to umo install it, configure it, what have you, but I want it to be kind of like, you know, lights off. Um, but also we want to still be able to, to work on it. Um, in the past, what we've done is we just did a ton of work on the beta branch. And if you're not familiar with version control in particular, Git might kind of be a, a Git specific issue, but I don't know. Um, what happens is when you're working independently on the beta branch, um, uh-oh, a problem with my mic audio? Uh-oh. What's the problem? Oh, okay. Might be the, the sensitivity on my, uh, sometimes I, sometimes when I'm talking to you after a while, I will, like, walk, I will pull my head back from the mic and the mumble sensitivity is is such that it cuts out but thank you for mentioning that let me know if it does it again but in, in any case you know we've been trying to develop the new alongside of supporting the old and it's created like a major headache to like merge the two at some point so my hope with this feature is to completely avoid that and when the time comes to launch the new version of the mod list we just simply you know shuffle it around and boom there you go so uh I'm actually going to lower my desk real quick, so please bear with me. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, okay. Interesting. We have not fully solved all audio issues. Oh, you know what? I'm coming in from the mumble audio, too. Uh, maybe I can mute myself on mumble. There we go. Uh, okay. Is that better, Gonzo? Nuts. Okay. Um, shucks. All, all right. Well, 
hopefully that's not too distracting and I'm gonna have to we're gonna have to work this out. But I'm gonna continue lowering my desk. Oh totally. Totally. Yeah, this um is the Final Fantasy VI Balance and Ruin. Uh, done by the OC Remix folks, and yeah, I just love this whole soundtrack. The FF7, I have FF6 and FF7 OC Remix on uh, my stream rotation, along with the Tamer Rebuilt soundtrack and the uh, Skywind soundtrack. Really, really good, uh, diverse array of tunes, but yeah, this tune in particular just kind of... I'm not like the biggest dubstep fan, but uh, I don't know. I'm down with it. <laughs> Alright, um, let me see if I can do some stuff here so um hmm. all right uh gonzo can you say something or or sector <laughs> all right i'm trying to see it's very tricky to mute myself uh, from Mumble, but not you guys, too. Maybe Setiness can help me with this uh, at another time. What kind of donut? Yeah, I can, so I can see myself um, in OBS on my uh, sort of readout here. I can see myself when I talk. I can see it on the Mumble audio as well. It's only one channel on Mumble. Um, that's probably a configuration error. Let me see here. It's supposed to be, oh yeah, it's not mono. Okay, there we go, now it's mono. Good. Oh, all right, cool. Well, I hope that's better. And apologies if it sounded jarring to anybody out there in internet land. Sweet. All right. Um, so, let me actually take my jacket off. It was a little chillier earlier today in uh, northeast Illinois, but it's, it's getting a little nice. The sun's coming out, actually, so that's good. Okay, let's... Um, so, what I want to do here with this feature is we want to make it so that the website allows for a kind of mod list that is not an official mod list, but, um, uh, oh, at 12, I see. Can you not hear Gonzo still, or are they still muted? Can we hear uh, Gonzo and Sector on that end? Please. I hope I didn't. Oh, fun. <laughs> All right. Wow, we're just... All right, let's take a quick... Try it one more time, please. No, I don't see... Hmm, that's weird. What did I do? Oh, okay. Check, check, one, two. That's me. Desktop audio, that's me. Can you, uh, can you do me a favor, either Gonzo or Sector, and just uh, say something? <laughs> Whoops. 
Well, shucks. Um, I undid what I did just a moment ago. Hopefully my echo is gone. I know. Okay, I'm gonna time box this, um, but I definitely wanna, before I give up, I want to resolve any annoying issues. Um, okay, so I have discontinued recording of mumble. No longer echoing, yeah, so that would definitely be it, okay. Um, Yeah, you can't really hear Gonzo anymore or Sector, unfortunately. Well, um, how about you guys hang out and chat for now, and we're gonna have to we're gonna have to resolve this. We're gonna have to get settiness up in here and, and school us. So what I want to do is, um, as I said, we want to have mod lists that exist in kind of a a limbo state where they're not like featured on the main page here. But we could still access them. So, um, you know, honestly, I haven't really thought about this too much. So let's just do a last mod list. Okay, here we go. Excuse me. So my first thought is what we can do is we can say, uh, excuse me. Oof. We can just add another field here. And just say for just putting something down there. We'll say models. Mm. Language server is failing me here big time. And so we have a Boolean field. That's a yes or no, true or false. And we simply have a field here that we would put on a mod list that says it's, it's a work in progress. Okay. Um, for argument's sake, let's... Uh, First, let's close the launcher. Give me my whole terminal. So, um, you can't. Oh, so I muted myself on this. Yeah, you got to hear me through the stream, my guy. Um, I've unfortunately muted mumble. Um, Okay, let's see if it beeps at me again. No? Yes? All right, yeah, we can't, unfortunately we can't, uh, I, I don't, don't think, think we can, can hear you on the stream anymore. And I'm probably back to duping. So I'm gonna mute that. Um, yeah, yeah, I unmuted Mumble. It's catching me from Mumble and from OBS, so. Uh, I wonder. How about this? So I'm now, that's exactly what I just did. Um, talk to me, Brother Gonzo, say something. Oh. Okay, good. I'm not getting you, let's just divert. Uh, okay. We can bump that up a little bit. Um, yeah, I do have the game. Yes, do me a favor and just uh, talk a little bit more. I wanna see you on my volume mixer here. Yeah, you. Yep. I'm trying. Mumble audio. Uh, hold off. Hold off for just a minute. Hold off for just a minute here. Okay, uh, Gonzo, say hi. <laughs> that didn't work. Nuts. Okay. Let me try one more thing.
one, two, one, 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 two. Okay. I should be back at my normal volume level, hopefully close to it. Um, so Gonzo asked, what is the what is the point of what I'm doing here? And so the idea is um, we want to develop, you know, major changes to a mod list alongside the current version rather than just outright replacing it, which is what we've done in the past. When we brought you 6.0 last year, we were working on a branch and we outright replaced all the other mod lists. And what I'm proposing here, I don't know if this is the best approach, honestly, but what I'm proposing here is that we have basically duplicates of the mod lists. So let me go ahead and create the data for that. So we might say uh, just good Morrowind. I'm going to come back up here to my code. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so we'll say here uh, true. And so what we might do now is let's go to our code that processes this. So I'm on lists. Okay. Um, Short description. There we go. Okay. So this would be the code where we do the business of slurping up the data, Tomal data. Okay. And so, okay. Every uh, mod list we have now is consisted of sublists. Um, we have the overall list and sublist. Didn't used to be that way, but uh, I think it was a good change for sure. And so what we're going to do here is we'll say... <clears throat> let's see here. I've been writing Go code for so long. The Mo Momo configurator is written in a language called Go. I've been writing Go for so long, I'm like forgetting how to Python. So let's try something here real quick. When you forget how to Python, the best thing to do is just get into the shell. So let's play around with it. Um, so we have a list here. And if I come back up here, okay, well, it's actually a dictionary. Yes. Okay. Okay, and I want to say... Whoop. And so when I try to access a uh, field that is not there. We get a key error. So I think the best approach is going to be... Yeah, Sophia, welcome! Thanks for hopping in. I'm glad that the uh, duplicates idea sounds good to you. Uh, yeah, I'm not like 100% sold on it. Uh, we're just kind of trying it out here, but I think it'll work, and I think it'll prevent us from basically being in merge hell like we were before. Maybe you remember 6.0 merge just being a a pain in many in many ways. Um, so yeah, I think the approach is going to be something like this. Try good old try except pattern. And so if we get the particular error that is spit out when I access something that isn't there, we say not a whip, not a whip. So if I say uh, l update. It's a whip. <laughs> cool. Uh, it didn't say not a whip. We didn't really put a code branch in there. Um, so let's come back to the code here. And let's figure out where this fits in. I think I jumped the gun trying to sne sneak it in here. Where would it Where would it fit in? Hmm. I want it to be close to where we put the slug list object okay yeah okay probably right here because what I want to do 
for the width lists is I want to append dash width for the slope. So let's do that. So we're, we're going to try to access, uh, actually, we want to do 50, because we might conceivably put wit false, and so we don't want to just, like, say it's a whip on, this tri on the purely on the presence of the wit field. We want it to be true. If it is a whip, Basically, if it's not a whip, we just do nothing, right? Just do nothing. Um, yes. Okay. Well, uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and crunch the data and see what happens. Will it blend? And in the meantime, we can uh, we can watch it crunch while I examine the code a little bit more here. Um, as far as processing the data, I think this is all we need to do. Detect the presence of the whip field, and if it is a whip, we will designate it as such in the slug. Um, yeah, and then at this point, it's a matter of filtering it down so that it doesn't show up when we don't want it to. And we'll be able to t play around with that once it's done crunching the data here. Woo! Okay. Ah, oh, yeah. Rookie mistake. Okay. What just happened? Well... What we have done is we have added the width field here to this uh, model class. And if you're not familiar with Django, the, the, the class that subclasses from model, doing this is subclassing. This is what represents the data structure in our database. Um, so when we add a field, we actually have to create what's called a migration, which alters the structure of the data in the database uh, to have the new field. So to do that, we just run the handy dandy make make migrations command and we're good to go and it won't blow up this time Todd Willen and so let's get a little ahead of ourselves here we'll do some dynamic pages views in Django parlance are how we decide what you see on a particular web page and uh, this file dynamic pages.py is where we indicate pages that are dynamic I tried to pick a logical name for that here and um, in particular we're looking for pages that list mod lists, right? And actually, the, the auto guide is a good candidate for that. On the auto guide, we, uh, it's the first one I found in the search, so we're using it. On the auto guide, we list all the mod lists here. And what we don't want is we don't want the wit mod list to show up here. Because they're not, you know, they're not ready for prime time yet. So what we'll do is, when this is done crunching here, it's a good sign we made it this far, we'll load up the auto guide, and we will see the just good moral and whip here. Um, and we will work to remove it. Okay. And removing it might look something like, uh, let's see. Okay, yeah. Here is where we set all of the, um, you know, this, this list of mod lists comes from this code right here. This is a database query. This is where we, we pull information out of the database with some code like this. Mod list, objects, filter, blah, 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 exclude. And uh, so what we might do here now is we'll have another exclude whip equals true. And so I'm actually going to because we want to see the dupe there. But this will give us our simple query. The nice thing about using a Boolean field is it, you know, it allows for a very simple database query. Every time we do something like this, every time we write a period and do a filter and an exclude, we're digging the database. Um, and we, I'll show you in the tooling, the local tooling we have, but it, every time you ding the database, that's a performance cost, right? That's like losing FPS on loading the website. And so we want to be really careful that we don't design a database layout 
that runs poorly, basically. Um, so the nice thing here is it becomes a really simple extension to the query and probably won't affect the performance too much, but we'll see that in just a moment once that's done crunching. We sure do have a lot of data. Wow. Page will show us 1,156 mods. This is all the mods in the database. Everything, regardless of if it's in a list or not. And each of these mods has a data path. Well, most of them, the vast majority have a data path. A lot of them have a plugin. Um, some of them have actions. This is what Umo, this is how Umo knows to what to do with a mod if there are special instructions archives as well, um, their presence in a mod list. So that's what's taken so long here. It's kind of neat to look at this page though and just see the sheer amount of uh, stuff <laughs> that's in here. Nice. Yeah, Gonzo just mentioned that uh, the authors here all link back to the proper Nexus mod page, a huge effort put forth by uh, Gonzo to make that accurate and and use the new Nexus mods uh, profile format here, next.nexusmods profile, the actual username. Um, so yeah, really good stuff. Like I said, we are always working to keep the website up to date. Usage notes, why? Wow. This one. It's a randomizer. We don't use a. Oh no, we are. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I was going to say. There we go. Good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so Gonzo just made a comment, um, since you can't hear him, that he's warming up. We uh, One of the changes Sarah Sunday made in uh, the excellent merge request that really revamped a lot of the user interface, one of the changes that was made was to move category and tags and stuff down here, and um, it was a bit of a you know hit or miss with people. I really liked it, and uh, yeah, Gonzo said he's warming up to it, so that's good to hear. Um, all right, well, here we are in our local version of the website, and, uh, okay, okay, we don't have two JGMs here, which is not what I expected, so let's see what happens. For when we re-crunch, I'm not going to do that right now, um, <clears throat> excuse me, let's do this. Journal mod list for the given query. Ooh, okay. Let's drop into the shell here again. Always fun when things don't do what you expect they do. All right, how about this? It's not an 
actual field. Okay, fair. Yeah, okay, so these are all the sub lists. This is the parent list, and we're not seeing my new one. So what happened? What happened? Just did loan. it occurs to me now what happened this is what happens when you forget how your own website works all right it's been a long time since I looked at this code but basically the way we feed the data into the database is we have this this mod lists function where we explicitly tell it to read each list so what I didn't do was do JDM with and so maybe we want to uh, change this so it actually just goes through each you know data source and we don't have to have this boilerplate um i'm not going to work on that today but that's something that is annoying me right now so it very well may happen in the future and we're going to call it because this is the name of the file okie doke and we come back down here set parent orders wow lots of boilerplate here while we By boilerplate, I mean all this stuff that's got to happen to do the work that's mostly the same for each one. Um, taking a step back, what we might do instead is we might say, okay, let's not just say each one explicitly, but let's do something where we read the folder with the data and we just process them all and we'll have a lot less repetition here. Um, almost certainly you're going to see that before 7.0 because, yeah, this is kind of annoying me right now. <laughs> all right, so we are now forced to... Yeah, yeah, man, you should have said something about this when you were doing the sub lists. <laughs> this is annoying. Let's recrunch the data. And yeah, we'll, uh, <laughs> it's all good, though. We had a lot of things going, uh, coming down the pipe at that time. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to change this because this is an this is really annoying. Um, so we're recrunching the data, and this time it will pick up the list. And so my expectation then is that we will see right here. Another just good Morrowind, and uh, and this one, will, the second one, will say dupe. And so I will then come back here to the dynamic pages file. I will remove the Akko. Oh, okay. Ooh, that's good. It did not blend, uh, and it's mad about a duplicate slug, which is okay. We're get we're getting places here. Good. It's like we never hit this. Oops. Gonna give ourselves a little breadcrumb here. Um, it's a sanity check so we know that's actually running. Because I'm not sure right now. But so my expectation here is once the crunching starts, here we go. Crunch all the mods. We're gonna see it print the uh, the slug, which again is the uh, this part of the URL. That's called a slug in web dev terminology. And I want to see it print the name down here, and then we'll go from there. Uh, it's like this block of code is not hitting. Um, Oh, okay. Ooh, here we go. Nice. That was some stuff. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. 
let's do this a better way. There we go. What did I just do? I threw whip on the name of the title. And this is just going to seamlessly... What I was trying to do... I was trying to be clever here. With this code. And like... You know, in a, in a not too slick way, auto inject the whip without explicitly saying it in the title. But thinking about it, it's not a really good idea. Obviously, it doesn't work too well. It's better to just put it in the title, make it official. There we go. All right. No explosions this time. All right. So yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll just have to, uh, the whip mod list will have whip explicitly in the name, but it will also be uh, under the hood in the database represented as such with this field. Uh, the thought crosses my mind now of, well, hey, I mean, since we're putting whip in the name, can we just avoid having the new field altogether and detect it as like the final part of the name? We could do that. We could do that before I, I will seriously consider that before we commit to going this route. Um, that being said, having the Boolean field will be better on performance um, because in Python in general and in database query land, when you're looking at like a string and, and doing that kind of a thing, it's way more expensive than just saying, is it a one or a zero? Because that's what we're saying here. Is it a one or zero? True or false is one or zero. And uh, this would perform infinitely faster than like looking at every you know slug, every title, and saying, "Is it a whip?" That way, um, it would be more seamless, more automatic. But I don't know. I'm not convinced it's something we should do. What's going on down here? There we go. Okay. So while that crunches, let's go back to our set list here. Woohoo! Yeah, while we're waiting for that to crunch, let's jump a little bit ahead and let's talk about this quality options discussion. Um, something that Gonzo in particular was working on. It's uh, it's born out of a couple of needs. Everybody has different setups. Everybody has different quality levels they'll play at. Um, you know, I'm playing on a Steam Deck and so I'm going to have options that, uh, you know, favor lower quality, will use less RAM, and so forth. Um, and so our intention here is that, uh, I don't know, maybe it's, uh, you know, another drop down here on the auto guide where we say, you know, choose your quality preference, high quality, ultra high quality, total ultra quality <laughs> or whatever, um, Steam Deck, low quality. Maybe we've got like another radio box. I'm not sure how we will present it to you, the user, but we'll have some way of giving you a choice of saying what quality you want. And um, then your config, <laughs> it's a good tune, I love this. Um, then your config that you generate would would match your quality you selected. So let's just for, just for dem demonstration's sake, we'll select uh, I Heart Vanilla. And that would come into play most likely with the configurator, since this is the thing that sets your load order and maybe you would say, um, maybe you would have an option for the configurator that says, you know, dash, dash, quality, high, low, medium, whatever. I'm not really sure what that looks like. Um, under the hood, though, I would like to have something not unlike this, which um, this isn't really a field that we really use, but uh, I would like to have a... No, we're totally not using that anymore. <laughs> All right, let's come up here where I think we are using it somewhere. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. 
we have an integer field for compatibility. And as you can see right here, we've got uh, compatibility levels represented by numbers. And I would like to do quality represented under the hood by numbers. So that way you can say, include all mods that are greater than or equal to some number that represents a compatibility field. That'll be really good for performance under the hood. And it will allow us to easily express, include mods up to this quality or, or below this quality or something like that. Going back to here. Okay, yeah, and here we go. Here's our whip mod list. So let's just go ahead and yank that out. Oops. Come on, Python Black, you can do it. There we go. And we'll just reload the page. There, it's still there. Oh. Let's get into the show. Gonzo asked uh, where, what part of Final Fantasy VI is this tune from? It's, uh, it's the tune, it's before that when you fight Antma Weapon. This is the tune that plays for Antma Weapon. It's a cover of that tune. Oh, yeah, just... I'm a Nobuo Uematsu fanboy, honestly. I like basically everything he's done, and I feel like some of the Final Fantasy tunes OSTs are, like, masterpiece level, you know? Just... I digress, though. I've done goofed here. Let's, uh... What did I do? What? How did I goof? Well, what I didn't do... You'll notice here I've got this query here. It says, give me all the mod lists that are whip. And there's nothing. Well, what the hey? And as we saw, my uh, my filter here didn't work. We're still seeing the whip. Well, turns out I'm not actually saving that data yet. Baby steps. So let's see here. Um. been forever since I yeah okay okay list of sublists okay 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 um this is where I want to do it so we're gonna say right here try So we're going to try to extract the data from the Tamil data. And if it's not there, we're just going to do nothing. No big deal. So, uh, mm, mm, mm. All right. so try, try to find that data, stick it in the database. And if it's not there, no big deal. It's not a whip. And we will crunch again. And while it's crunching, let's go back to our discussion of quality. We're just all over the place today. I'm going to go ahead and write this down here. So we might uh, represent... We'll represent quality as an integer in the database. And in the user interface... It will be represented as, you know, the human readable name. And again, we want to represent it as an integer in the database because it's going to perform, you know, we've tossed around ideas like having a high quality tag um and and things like that and i actually really love that and i think we should maybe also have quality tags i don't know um 
but like the performance is where that really will start to suffer um and it will manifest itself in longer page load times but also when you run the configurator we come back here to the auto guide when you run the configurator it's making a request to the website for the cfg generator data it gets all of it and we can actually see that here let me just go ahead and uh curl minus s So under the hood, the configurator is doing this. Let's zoom out a little bit here so we can get a better picture. But it's basically in one web request, it's getting all of the data from the CFG generator page in just a strictly text-based key value format, right? We got all the fallbacks, data pass, and so forth. And then we do stuff with it. We put it into your config file. And if we ha start to have like a bunch of text filtering this is already kind of a, it's a pretty fast you know like let's do total overhaul here total overhaul yeah, it's like a you know three seconds load um not bad considering that we are by the way we're using an extremely low power server for the website and when i look at our website statistics um you know we're kicking out 50 plus thousand visits a week um, when we extend that to the monthly and quarterly view the past year we had over 3 million views to the website considering that amount of traffic I think the website does pretty good despite being not the most you know powerful box we could possibly get um, yeah so in the past month a quarter of a million views boom right there like whew, on, on a single core one gigabyte of ram machine by the way so i think we're doing pretty well and i think three seconds two three is pretty good for that considering um how weak of a machine it is i digress though back to ooh, ooh. okay ooh. i made some kind of a code boo-boo here let's take a look parent oh okay hmm. right right okay i made a mistake here what did i do so this update bit right here in Python is what you do to add something to a dictionary. A dictionary is a thing that you make with curly braces and it's a key value data structure. And uh, <laughs> this parent obj thing is not a dictionary. It's a, it's a mod list object. And I, in my haste, you know, just looked at the dictionary here and thought, yeah, that's it, that's it, right? Um, what we need to do though instead is we say, whoop. This is some end boss music right here, Gonzo. Okay. And so let's take a real. It's the Kefka music. So let's just take a look at this. Uh, Wow, okay, Gonzo is telling me about how for Final Fantasy XIV there were some remakes of these tunes, and uh, I'm interested in that. I will be checking. Thank you. Thank you for the plug on that. So I wanted to confirm here that this generate mod list obj function is returning me a mod list, and you can see it does here. That's indicated by the little arrow sign after the parentheses here. It's given me a mod list thing. So I know, reasonably, at least, reasonably sure, that, uh, whoops, come on, here we go. This code is correct. We have the created mod list thing, and we're going to, uh, you know, update the whip field. And it's going to be saved because we are. Let's just do an explicit save here. Parent. So we can change the field, but it doesn't actually go into the database until we call the save method on the uh, model object. So we're going to do that. We're going to crunch again. And we're going to resume our chit-chat about quality levels. Um, 
so let's come back here to the models and so here's the thing that makes it a little complicated we're not just dealing with mods as like a, a thing that has a quality level maybe one mod might be strictly only for high quality but maybe one mod might have options for many different quality levels so we can't just say the quality level of the mod it's not going to work um It can't just be on the mod. We will have to have some way of determining what a mod's quality is maybe through that object, but it's going to have to be deeper than that. We're going to need to look at the data path. So where does the data path come into play? A data path, maybe a mod has like ultra HD textures, right? And so that's where a data path quality level would come into play. We would say that this particular data path, let's go ahead and look at our data for the data paths. We might say something like, um, and this is just a hypothetical. We'll say moral land uncapped attributes. This is an extremely high quality mod. It definitely is. But for demonstration purposes, we would say that this folder path, maybe it provides some, you know, some HD level up icons that will make your Steam Deck crash. And so we would say quality level. Mm, you know, um, we could say like six, but that's not very intuitive for somebody who's working with this data. So we might want to say something like quality level UHQ. And then we can process that in our processing code, right? Um, so coming back here. Excuse me. So I'm not totally sure if this is the right name for the field, but we might have a quality level field. And then, yeah, we would have some kind of a map under the hood that would take the human readable name whatever that may be, and, and map it to a database-friendly thing. Um, so we'd have it on the, it can't just be on the mod object, but we'd have it on I suppose it's conceivable that a plugin could be you know, HQ, HQ only or, or LQ only. So indeed, we might have the same thing here. pick on moral land again and we'll say well this is such an hq mod it's like and we'll say that let's let's pretend that this plugin adds like some extremely hq thing i don't even know so we might say that here too where else might we want to so let's go on uh, back to our models here It's conceivable, too, even though we're in this world of everything's automated and you don't have to worry about how to use something, we got it covered for you. We still may want to for posterity and those folks doing the manual process. They are out there, by the way. We may still want to do HQ usage notes. I'm not going to write the whole thing out here just yet. Um... So that brings us to, we've got, we've got data paths, mod plugins, and usage notes that may be designated, you know, uh, a particular quality level. Am I missing anything else? Let's take a look at what our category, nope. I mean, I don't think it's appropriate we could have a category that's HQ, but I, don't, I actually don't think that's a good category. That would be more like a tag or something, right? Mod, again, um, we might not have a field for that, but we might have a property. 
and the property might be like something like has quality options or has HQ or something like that. Um, it all depends on like how we might use it. So this is something to think about for later, but not right now. Mod list, not really appropriate for this, if you ask me. Um, love this tune too. Flying around in an airship right now. <clears throat> A mod list, though, it's not its not appropriate for this, really. Um, a mod list is going to have high quality, low quality, no quality designation things whatsoever. Not relevant here. Moving on. Mod archive. I don't think it's relevant for this. This is something that Umo uses under the hood to know about how to handle a, a file that you're downloading from Nexus or some, some other place. Not really relevant here. Action. Um... Arguably also not relevant here. Maybe I'm missing something, but I really I really don't think it's relevant here. Um, Sublist, same goes for mod list here. Sublist will contain maybe varying you know levels of quality, not relevant. Listed mod. This is just an implementation detail about mod lists, not relevant. Mod plugin, again, we just we did decide it is conceivable, maybe a plugin, you know, because a plugin can add a, a object record maybe for like a super high definition sword we got a sub-zero sword somebody made uh, a couple weeks ago that looked pretty cool we consider that ultra hq you know um and we would put the tag the field on here so definitely relevant there data path bit of a no-brainer on this one definitely relevant here usage notes also relevant here extra cfg this is an interesting one because conceivably we could say, what is extra CFG, Johnny? Well, let's go ahead and load up a quarter's worth of traffic data while I bring you back to the config generator. And extra CFG is stuff that ends up here, basically. Um, it could also be in the OpenMW CFG. I forget if we do any fallbacks that way, but extra CFG is like, oh, uh, you know, I'm a ground cover mod, so obviously I require ground cover to be enabled. You know, that kind of a thing. So it is conceivable, maybe, that we have, like, a, if you have selected a high-quality preset, maybe we don't do it now, but maybe in that case we would set the view distance for you. Or we would say, um, object paging min size, maybe we would lower this a little bit. Again, for this value, the lower the number, the higher quality the distant objects are. Um, or something like that. So it is conceivable that we would have an extra CFG that is specific to a particular quality level. So let's uh, let's add that to the list here. I think it's definitely relevant. Tag. Uh, it's debatable. I'm gonna go with no. But it's debatable. It would be neat to have a tag, but again, you know, there's the concern about performance there. And change log, definitely not. Change log entry, definitely not. So yeah, so we've got here uh, four of our object models in the database that need to be designated whether they're high quality or not. Or not. Um, good, okay. Now, back to the thing I was doing before I did the thing. All right, so now you see here we have just one, just good Morrowind. And for posterity, let's go ahead and drop into the shell. And here is our query. Give me all mod lists that are just with. And here's our one. So great. Now that means I have to go and update every place in the code, right? Where we're searching for mod lists. Well, yes and no. What I'm going to do is, right now we're just doing this, uh, this is what's called a query set. We have our mod list database object, and this objects word here is a query set. And uh, objects is one that you get by default with Django objects, and it's just everything. And then you might filter it down with, you know, filters like we're doing here. What I'm going to do is we're going to make a query set that if excludes with mod lists by default, and rather than just doing this exclude everywhere in the code all over and over, we'll just employ the, the query set. You'll see what I mean, check it. Okay. These are various query sets I've already written. 
don't really use these, a lot of these uh, in the code base. I should just go and delete the ones we don't actually use, but uh, let's say comma list. actually have any mod list query sets. All right. Fair enough. And uh, what we do is when we do a uh, query set like this, we basically just implement the get query set method. Um, this is a bit of object-oriented programming, which is peppered all throughout Django. Django is the, the code framework we use for the website. So we'll just do a little OOP here. And implement the thing so we look like the thing that it wants. And we'll do return. Super, Super means that we are, we are calling get query set on the thing we inherit from. Again, this is object-oriented programming. We're taking some other class and we're extending it. We want to call the get query set method on the super first. Like this, a super gives us models manager and then query set. And then we'll filter additionally on top of that. And, and in this case, actually, I made a mistake. Super is going to give us uh, the mod list objects query set, and we're going to be filtering filtering that. So remember, I was talking here, this thing right here. It's going to give us that. So we're going to say whip false. It's going to be that easy. Yeah, yeah, totally. Sector just asked about uh, doing some Emacs shenanigans after the stream. And I mean, you know, um, maybe when the stream is done, we can spend a little bit of time trying to, you know, unbork the audio and maybe we can just do an extended stream. I will need lunch at some point, though. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. I would love to. Okay, so just for giggles, I'm going to make it say true because I want to see it. Cool, cool. Yeah, they can't hear you at the moment, and you're hearing me on a delay, too, which is extra interesting. Um, yeah, I've got to fix that. Amateur hour over here with the audio setup. Um, yeah, totally. I'm down, man. So let's go ahead and plug this in. Um, when you want to, when you write a, uh, a query manager, I think is the term that Django uses for him, um, you have to import it and then plug it in, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and just... Uh, go And we'll go to class mod list. Right yeah, and you can see here I'm not using any of the. I, well, I don't have any query managers for mod lists, but uh, if I just scroll up a little bit here. So I'm using. I have defined these uh, query managers, but I don't actually know if I'm using any of these, to be honest with you. Um, would be good to do some code cleanup about that. Anyway. So let's go ahead and just say uh, non whip. Whip not this, and it's going to be that easy, right? Let's go ahead and reload the shell. All right, and so now we will just say non whip all. Boom, and it's just the. Uh, zero mod that's interesting uh it's just the one so let's go ahead and reverse that now let's make it how it should be uh, 
And so now what we can do is we can go back to our code and any place where we are listing mod lists for you, the user, we will simply say, instead of objects, we'll say non-whip. Let's fire up our WTF website here. And we can see no whip there. And just to demonstrate the change again, let's go ahead and objects. Give me them all. You see it reload down here. Good. We got the whip. Reload the site. Now we don't. Cool. Okay. And so it simply becomes a matter of, yeah, using this as sort of our base query set. It's pretty explicit too, I think. Uh, mod list, non whip. You know, that's our, you know, pretty clear about what we're requesting there. So let's go ahead and find every place, hopefully where we're using this mod list. Um, yeah, so I need not look much further. Um, do I want to exclude whip mod list from the auto guide? Because check it, we could do something like this and it's perfectly valid. I can click JGM. I can come up here and I'm like a URL hacker. I can say whip and it works. Just good morrow and whip. I don't think I want to exclude that from being something people can do but we'll keep that in our back pocket let's go to the top of the dynamic page okay directories okay um yeah so this is what we do whip users guide top level lists Ooh, okay interesting i don't remember seeing that in there let's see Okay, no, I do have, how about that? Look at that. If I just would have scrolled down a little bit. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to adjust one of our existing managers that I apparently missed. Top level, okay, here we go. Filter parent lists none and Good old find and replace. Boom. Okay. Um, that obviously wouldn't catch the top level list query, so let's go ahead and do this again. List dot. Okay. Auto guide. Okay, we're back to the top. That should actually be everything. Um, so let's test it. Okay, yeah, and as I intended, there is no JGM whip here. It's just the official one. However, I can come up here if I know the secret passcode, and I can get the whip mod list here. So cool, yeah, and there's my dupe. All right, cool. So the framework is in place for us now, basically. Yeah, yeah, secrets, exactly, Gonzo says. <laughs> um, the framework is in place. Um, for us to kind of get cracking on 7.0 and actually i uh i gotta tell you guys a secret we've been working on 7.0 low key for a while now what do i mean by that we have been adding new mods to the database for some time in preparation for adding those mods to the list in a major update um we can see here you know going back to august just, I believe it was not just Gonzo, but Gonzo did a ton of this work, adding all kinds of new stuff. We're gearing up to put these into lists. We're not there yet. Um, and this is only the 100 latest additions, but yeah, lots of stuff here um, that is going to find its way into our lists. Let's see if I can find one that's dear to my heart here. Uh, they got the Ur fleshed out. I gotta tell you, this mod is like chef kiss worthy uh they got the refleshed out 
super neat take on the final dungeon of the main quest, and I will say no more. But we've been working on this for a minute. We've been laying the tracks. And so this is just more tracks in the way of getting that done. So actually, I'm going to let's review what we got here. We got the whip edition. We got the whip mod list. Changes to the queries. We're going to go ahead and just do that. Yes. And the, the manager changes. Let's erase my debug print. And as I said before, I'm going to clean this up later so we don't have a bunch of duplicate code here. We can just slurp up all the TOML files. And then processing a new mod list is as simple as just adding the file to the right folder. Yeah. Should have done that a long time ago. We're not going to keep that. I'm going to leave it there, though. Um, I will keep that for now. Um, I will not keep that, but leave it there. Okay, and so this is looking like... Uh, rounding out the changes that are going to, you know, allow us to, like, officially begin working on the next major update to the website. Wait a minute. You're doing a major update to the website? Yeah, well, so going back to um, kind of what I talked about with rolling release and stuff, our intention is to launch new versions of the bot lists once OpenMW 0.49 releases. And why are we waiting for that? Because at present, if you look at any of our mod lists, we got this neato section here. Dev build only. And these are mods, as it says, that require the latest OpenMW developer build. Now, when 0 0.49 releases, it's no longer going to be a developer build. It's no longer going to require people, you know, take the relative risk of using an experimental build of OpenMW. It's going to be the real thing. So, the approach is going to be, we're going to take not all of these, most of them. And we're going to officially integrate them into the list. You'll no longer need to tell the configurator, give me the bleeding edge. It's just going to be a part of it. Um, and so that is going to be a significant change, which as we said here in our release process, major release contains large changes to the mod lists or mo uh, new mod lists in general. And you better believe unleashing these mods and others to the masses is going to constitute major change. So... Uh, Everything from animation blending to, uh, you know, muse packs. Some of my own creations are uh, going to find their way into the lists. So, yeah, exciting times. Um, and so I can't tell you exactly when OpenMW 0.49 is going to release. But, uh, you know, I heard from a certain video uh, co-narrator that maybe we might be working on that. And it might be maybe happening soon. I don't know. The team is definitely gearing up, though, to kind of wrap up a very long development cycle and get that out to the users. Um, so, yeah, when that happens, we want to launch 7.0. Maybe. <laughs> to help <out> my guy. <laughs> uh, when 0 0.49 drops, we want to launch 7.0, ideally, like, at the same time. Exactly. A major update to the website. Get everybody excited about OpenMW and the new stuff that's coming. So... With that in mind, I want to try now to uh, bring Gonzo back in the audio mix and Sector back in the audio mix. See if I can unborculate the things. Yeah, yeah, hold up. Yeah, I'm not getting you on the audio just yet, but let me try and tweak OBS a little bit. And uh, Thank you, everybody, for bearing with me on this dumpster fire, audio dumpster fire. So Sector, you you can't hear him. You can't hear Sector, but he's talking about some cursed parts of the OpenMW engine that definitely need some love, and uh, <laughs> in, in particular with audio. And that might explain some of the reservations about the Lua audio changes that were made. We didn't want to go too deep into the depths of Cthulhu land. Hmm, okay. Um... Let's see here. Microphone from. Hey, Sector. 
Gonzo, talk to me. Uh, what did I do? They are not showing up. I have no idea what I did. Um... Okay, um, how about now? No, nope, you're not showing up. What, what the heck? Nope. Shucky darn dang. We're going into overtime here, folks. Bear with me. I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna drop from, yes, yes, me too, Somalia, always. May is a great time of year. I'm gonna drop from Mumble. I'll be right back with you guys. Hey, okay. Yeah. Gonzo, talk to him. Say something. All right. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, okay. Um, how about, okay, Gonzo, one more time, please. didn't get you yeah I don't all right music should have muted yeah discord chat audio which I renamed to mumble yeah I am just vexed about this. I don't... What if I did this? Gonzo, talk to me. Yes, hello. Ooh, uh, okay, I think you should have went through there. You're going through my laptop speaker now instead of my earbuds. Something to do with that. Yeah, uh-huh. It came through on stream. Yeah, okay, hello, okay. Hello. Good deal. Okay, so we're getting somewhere here. Woo, yeah, awesome. I am gonna, on that note, crank down the music just a little bit here. All right, well, that is interesting. Just to share with you what I'm looking at here, I've got this, uh, again, I'm using Linux and I've got this uh, volume control thing and uh, I have all these different inputs for recording. My microphone goes in through a uh, USB interface got the microphone cable and everything um versus you know plugging it directly into my mic my, my laptop through an eighth inch audio port um and so yeah you can see here all the different audio inputs and uh i have now routed gonzo and co that are talking to me on mumble through my desktop audio and so if gonzo chirps up again you'll see his audio come here say something gonzo He is also, of course, on a little bit of a delay. Maybe. Oh, I thought I said something. Hello? There you go. Yeah, you can see see right there. Uh, there's Sector in the chat there. Okay. Um. So this is a clue about something. I'm going to have to chat with Settiness later on and just figure out WTF I did wrong. But I've got you routed through my desktop audio. Um, instead, let me take a look at the properties of that. Monitor and output. Mono. Yeah, guy, what did I do? I wonder. Put you back in my earbuds. And I take...
Talk to me, Gonzo. Say something. Did that come through, y'all? I don't think so. Yeah, so I don't know. Something, some thing. I'm going to put you back on my laptop speaker so you're back in the show. All right. Well, we're kind of getting towards the end of uh, the stream here, but we're good. We might do a little extended set while Sector and I hack on Emacs a little bit. Um, you should hear him now after a while, but thank you so much. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and actually make this official, huh? Excuse me. Okay, we're not keeping that or that. This is just a hypothetical. This is our whip mod list. Yep. This is our code that reads the whip stuff. Managers, managers, commanders. Yeah, okay. So uh, let's see here. Okay. Very good. Um, I'm gonna push that up. I can demonstrate to you folks here our neato pipeline that happens now. So I push that code up. You can see get finished down there in the corner. And uh, yeah, we now we got a pipeline kicked off. It's uh, as you can see, it's running, and we have two stages that are running. Before we do anything, before we put any code up on the website, we always run tests so that we make sure we don't, you know, seriously bork anything. So the tests will run, um, basically open almost every page on the website, make sure there's no errors. Then when the tests pass, we have this deploy stage. Uh, we have two different deploys that happen. One is a really quick one that doesn't need to reset the database. Maybe we didn't change any data. You know, we don't need to reset the database. We just change like some HTML. That usually happens very quick, like a minute or two. This is the full deploy, which is gonna nuke the database, all that stuff. That takes about uh, eight to 10 minutes, roughly. So we got that going on. It's coming in the pipe once the tests pass, of course. So yeah, okay. Um, let's go back to the set list here. So we did a bit of work on the whip lists. Um, we have the framework in place for us to, you know, formally begin working on that as we sort of round the, uh, the finish line or approach the finish line for uh, OpenMW 0.49, hopefully coming out soon. We just got to make sure that uh, major bugs are squashed before we get there. Um, we talked a bit about the quality options discussion. I don't know if that's going to be in the website for 7.0. I would like it to be, but this is um, it's a feature that's going to require a lot of work, not only to implement it properly, in a way that is not terrible, but also to like actually identify what are the high quality options, what are the low quality options, and, and make sure that it's easily discoverable by you, the user, you know. So this is a really, really, really big bite. I would say this is arguably a bigger bite than bringing you 7.0. 7.0, we just have to add mods and sort them properly, which is not trivial. Um, you know, it's a, it's a lot of work that goes into that. A different kind of work than this you know we have the existing framework in the code to do that and it's just a matter of playing things make sure that they're not you know broke um and all that so i would like this to be in 7.0 but it might be in a release afterwards but yeah yeah we're thinking of you and we're trying to bring it to you soon um didn't really get a chance to look at this but uh, one of our friends in the community actually opened a bug uh, about the configurator um hey, maybe in overtime maybe we will look at it but it turns out the configurator when you use the uh portable option so if you're playing a portable installation we don't actually properly generate the nav mesh db in the portable install that's an oversight on my part um so i'm definitely happy to correct that and, and make the feature work as expected um no, it looks like we just lost sector, so I don't know if Emacs happening, Emacs hacking is going to happen. But I will go ahead and check these off because um, we did 
We did do them. We did address them. We didn't quite get here yet. I might do it after lunch. Who knows? Um, so I think that's it for overtime today. Thank you for bearing with my audio troubles, and thank you for joining. And uh, until the next time, happy modding. Cheers, folks. Take care. Next time, happy modding.